In 1985, the Reverend Dwight Moore came to preach in this small church outside of Burlington, North Carolina. Recently separated from his wife and children, he had come to this small parish hoping to start a new life. Within a few short weeks, he befriended one of his parishioners, an attractive widow by the name of Blanche Taylor. He became so obsessed with her that he couldn't stop writing her name. He wrote, Dear Blanche, you are the most kind and loving person I have ever known. To the Reverend Moore, a man now very much in love, this daughter of a preacher was the perfect woman. My first impression of Blanche was that she was a very friendly, uh, outgoing, energetic person, which uh, I felt would be really good for Dad. I thought that they would get along pretty well together. In 1989, after three years of courtship, Blanche married Reverend Dwight Moore, but two weeks later, his son received an alarming phone call. I had a phone call from Blanche, and she said, your father's very ill, he's in the hospital. Um, it doesn't look good, I think you should come down. Just two weeks after his wedding, Dwight Moore had suddenly begun to suffer from severe bouts of nausea, and his body had become grotesquely swollen. Now, as each day passed, his condition grew worse, but doctors were still unable to diagnose what was wrong with him. Until they began to test for toxic substances. When the results of the test came back, doctors could not believe what they saw. The toxicology test showed that the Reverend Dwight Moore had in his system more arsenic than had ever been documented in any living human being. The results came back at greater than 10,000 micrograms per liter. It was even higher than levels that I had recalled uh, reading uh, about from the literature, even in cases of fatal intoxication. I was astounded that uh, Reverend Moore was still alive with that amount of arsenic in his system. Detectives, realizing that someone was trying to kill Reverend Moore, placed him under guard. With treatment, he miraculously began to recover his strength, but he had been severely crippled. Always a healthy man, he now had difficulty feeding himself and could hardly walk. The arsenic had attacked his liver and kidneys and had caused severe neurological damage. Detectives began to question the hospital staff, Reverend Moore's friends and family, anyone in the hospital who had access to him. Finally, they got to his wife, Blanche. When detectives began to look into her past, they learned that Blanche had been married to a man named James Taylor for 20 years. At the age of 45, he suddenly began to suffer from mysterious flu-like symptoms. One month later, he died from what doctors said was heart disease. Detectives also found that even before her husband had died, Blanche had begun a relationship with her boss, Ray Reed. The affair lasted 10 years until he suddenly was stricken with a painful disease of the nervous system called Guillain-Barre a disease that often exhibited the same symptoms as arsenic poisoning. Detectives felt that the death of her husband and that of her boyfriend were too much of a coincidence and warranted further investigation. They asked forensic pathologist Dr. John Butts to review Raymond Reed's medical records. When I did review his medical records, in my opinion, the, the presentation of his case, uh, that is the way his symptoms started, uh, and the clinical course he followed was basically a textbook example of arsenic poisoning. And uh, I then recommended to the district attorney that uh, he be exhumed and his body tested for the presence of arsenic. Five days later, they exhumed the body of Blanche's former boyfriend, Raymond Reed, from Pine Hill Cemetery. We found that he was in an excellent state of preservation. And in fact, when we examined his uh, hands, we could see the 
uh, fingernails quite distinctly, and uh, he had the typical what are called Mies lines or Mies Aldridge lines present on the fingers that can be seen in instances of arsenic poisoning. And when we analyzed his hair, we also found elevated toxic levels of arsenic present in his hair. The, the concentrations that we found were at a range that we felt were toxic or potentially lethal. Blanche Moore was now directly connected to two men who were found to be poisoned with arsenic. But were there more? When they exhumed the body of Blanche's first husband, James Taylor, they were still able to find, even after 15 years, lethal concentrations of arsenic in his brain and kidneys. Soon after that, the bodies of her mother-in-law, Isla Taylor, and her own father, Parker Kaiser, were also exhumed and found to have high concentrations of arsenic in their bodies. Police now felt they had enough circumstantial evidence to convict Blanche Taylor. But there were witnesses. Nurse Wanda Moss testified that she saw Blanche feed Ray Reed cornbread and milk in the hospital, and that soon after, he experienced fits of violent vomiting. Reverend Dwight Moore, emotionally drained, but well enough to appear at the trial, reluctantly testified against his wife. Did you eat what she brought you? Yes, I did. What happened? Uh, uh, within approximately a half hour to 45 minutes, uh, I experienced severe nausea and vomiting. Dwight Moore also testified that Blanche had asked him to purchase a bottle of anti-ant, a pesticide whose ingredients contain 2% arsenic, enough arsenic to kill 10 adults. But Blanche Moore, who had spent a year in detention awaiting trial, still maintained she was innocent. But in the press, she was now called the Black Widow. The most important thing is that every man in her life, of uh, Raymond Reed, Dwight Moore, James Taylor, uh, died or almost died from arsenic and the only thing in common uh, amongst those three men is Blanche and arsenic. On November 14, 1990, Blanche Taylor Moore was found guilty of the capital murder of Ray Reed. That it is your recommendation as a jury, the unanimous recommendation that the defendant Blanche Taylor Kaiser Moore be put to death as by law provided. May God have mercy. Her I think that there is reason to believe there are other there are persons out there uh, perhaps who are still alive such as Dwight Moore who have been poisoned by Blanche Moore and I think that she uh, did this to many people in her life I think she poisoned someone perhaps every year for 30 years every day the reports of symptoms of uh, numb hands and uh, uh, nausea uh, symptoms of arsenic poisoning are reported by everyone uh, just numerous people that I interviewed uh, who came in contact with her. Blanche Taylor Moore continues to protest her innocence while she awaits her execution on death row.